Next. Oh, we got the art of the playoff choke. Dallas Cowboys. Now, Dallas Cowboys or Dallas Cowgirls, um, at this point, I don't even know what to say to you, okay? At this point, I don't know what y'all could even be telling yourselves. What could y'all possibly be telling y'all selves? Let me know that let me know in the comments why y'all thought that y'all lost or not just lost, but got y'all ass devoured. <laughs> How y'all got y'all ass devoured by the Packers last year? Um, let me know what happened, okay? Let me know. Um, but we're gonna check out, you know what I'm saying, the history, not the history of the choke, but let's just see, bro. Hit the like button, hit that sub button. There is nothing quite as painful as repeatedly getting to the playoffs, then losing time after time after time. The Cowboys haven't reached the NFC Championship since 1995, despite the fact that they've trotted out some of the most talented teams of the past decade. Today, we'll dive into the offensive film of the last three playoff losses, where I found one common thread that runs through each devastating defeat. Right. Starting with 2021, then working our way to the present, the Cowboys faced off with the 49ers and fell 23-17 in Dallas. While it came down to the wire, you could just feel Dak Prescott was playing tight. They were 12-5, won their division, scored the most points in the league, and were one of the best teams overall. Expectations were even higher than usual that this could be the year they break through, but the pressure of everything crushed this team. In this game, you could just tell Dak was pressing. He knew what this win, and next win, and next win would mean for Dallas, and you could tell he wasn't playing his game. He wasn't taking the easy layups with C.D. Lamb outside pre-snap with the corner way off. If C.D. breaks his one tackle, he's running forever, and when a team senses the quarterback is pressing, it permeates throughout the rest of the offense. Now, it is a big thing. We do know Dak, I think it's about time to get a new quarterback. Now, I know, I know, I know. Dak Prescott, he's went through a lot in his life, you know, especially with his mom and stuff like that. Um, and his story is just so, you know, unbelievable that you kind of don't want to move on from him because you want the happy ending. But when you're a head of a or corporation, when you're the head of the Dallas Cowboys, you have to, it's a cutthroat business, okay? If you're not getting it done, you're just not getting it done. Bro. We didn't try year and year and year and year and, and the same results keep happening. It might be that time, bro. Let me know in the comments if y'all think y'all should um, get a new quarterback. I feel like y'all should, bro. I'm not going to lie. I feel like y'all should. Team senses the quarterback I feel like pressing. Should, it permeates throughout the rest of the offense. Like I said, I fuck with Dak Prescott too, bro. I fuck with him too. There bro. were multiple it's examples of business. Dak and the receivers not being on the same page, where plays are drawn up for the receiver to get to one specific landmark, and if he's not there, the it's gonna look like a wild miss. And the Cowboys especially struggle to get in sync against zone coverage, where receivers' routes are supposed to change based on where the coverage is. On a critical play in the early fourth quarter, down 23-7, check this 49ers disguise. It looks exactly like cover one man with the one high safety, the press man coverage, and the three defensive backs over the bunch. But at the snap, they drop into cover two zone nice. with two deep safeties, and Dak and Amari Cooper just aren't on the same page. Both are tight. Ideally, tight. Dak reads this rotation at the snap and hits CD up the sideline. Maybe that's too high of an expectation with this disguise, but the problem is Cooper's route. If Emmanuel Mosley had followed his shallow route and man coverage across the field, Amari would keep running to try and create space away from the man coverage. But since it's zone, he's supposed to settle down into the space underneath and stop oh, his route. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. But Look at the disconnect between two veteran, yeah. supposedly elite on, players. Bro. If they were perfectly in sync, Dak would have read Dre Greenlaw driving on the shallow and put this back shoulder so Amari could turn the other way upfield and pick up the four yards. But Cooper kind of stops, as he should. Dak throws it much, and the miscommunication leads to an incomplete pass. Like everybody else, Mike McCarthy and Kellen Moore watched in real time as Dak kind of seized up under all the pressure and scrutiny of this game. So they had to call simpler concepts that didn't require him to think as much, 
Which and that's and and the fact that they even had to do that is a problem. So they had to call simpler concepts. They had to call simpler route concepts because your quarterback can't think under pressure. Think of, just think about that sentence. And you want to hold on to this quarterback when literally, if you get rid of this quarterback, y'all will probably be ten times better. Because honestly, it's not even. If we read, we're gonna see this video, but. We gonna see. Is it is it one main thing that's wrong with the Cowboys? Maybe the only reason y'all are not winning is because of Dak. I don't know. It might be yo. It might be. It might be. Uh, that might be really the the real key factor of this whole situation. Hold that on. Didn't require him to think. It as might just much. be Dak. Which... Everybody run a curl route. What is this? What is this, bro? Little league ass plays, bro. Everybody run the curl route. Just because your quarterback can't think under pressure. And they still threw a pick. Didn't work. Yep. This is an all curl concept, which just doesn't stress the defense that much. All the routes come open at the exact same time, so Dak can't really go through a progression. He just has to pick a guy. And, and still pick the wrong guy. <laughs> then he's cheap out of luck. No. The bro. loss was a tough pill to swallow, but it still felt like the Cowboys were building. Parsons, Diggs, and CD were still young. McCarthy was going into his second full season with Dak healthy. Things were still looking up, but despite the fact they were 12 and 5 again, the Eagles finished better. So Dallas landed in the wild card where they did smash the Buccaneers 31-14. Dak was spectacular. Don't want to gloss over this at all. So the Cowboys headed to San Francisco oh, where they suffered again. a debilitating 19 to 12 loss. Damn. This time, I don't put it as much on Dak or the offense, but more on the dominance of the 49ers and D'Amico Ryan's scheme. Okay. One thing Ryan's did to scheme them up was study and dissect the previous year's film. Check the Cowboys formation with the three receivers at the bottom and how they're running dagger. CD clears out the coverage for the tight end Dalton Schultz to break into the open space, but Ryan's has Talanoa Hufanga ready. He almost knows what's coming and flies down to take care of the in-breaking route. Well, when we go back to an example from earlier in the video the year prior, the 49ers are playing quarter-quarter half with this safety in a deep half and then two quarters defenders, and watch what happens. The half safety takes the clear out, the bottom quarters defender takes the go, but Joukowsky Tart isn't necessarily ready Terrible to drive ass. down on the dig. So when we go back to our 2022 example, Hufanga knows each receiver is accounted for, so he now has the freedom to drive down and break up the now good throw. Another thing Ryan did well was scheme against what Dak likes to do best, throw up the seam. Mm. He is fantastic at playing with in structure and getting through his reads one, two, three. He is a robot for better or worse, so Ryan Damn. knew he had to mix up looks to protect the seams and force him out of his comfort zone. Wow. This is basically 989, which we talk about damn near every week, curls instead of goes though, where they're running two curls outside of the sticks and then a dig post that converts based on where the safeties are. When there's just one high safety, you don't want CD running a post, so he converts to a dig, but the 49ers are ready. They know this is gonna be a dig under the safety, so they drop Dre Greenlaw off right underneath, forcing Dak to play off his typical rhythm, and he throws a late curl, which is intercepted. There were and then, also, that's another thing too, does Dak be forcing passes? Typical. I think I feel like he'd be forcing it, bro. So they drop- like, it's, it's okay sometimes, like, let's think about it. Would you rather take a sack or throw a pick? Which one? Drop Dre you know Greenlaw off right underneath. Or, like you said, it's his second healthy se season, so he should also, too, if it's nothing's open, use your legs. You don't see Patrick Mahomes forcing passes. Patrick Mahomes, if he he will run. He will get outside the pocket and ensure he has a dot. He won't just force a pass, bro. Forcing Dak to play off his tip. Like this, he could have he literally ran. Oh, my God. Look at this. So they dropped just ran, Greenlaw right? off right underneath. Okay, look, bang. He see, he see this is not open. Forcing. Bang. Okay, he knows it's not open. Dak. You see this? Okay, this could be open, but you have to wait a second. Just wait a second and see, because the corner is still there, bro. He's still there, and you still have your check down right here. Didn't, didn't use that. Then you have this whole right side of the field wide open. You can get, I don't even know what down this is, but you can get something out of this, bro. You know what I mean? Like To play off. 
Like, come on, bro. Look at this. This is at least about 15, 20, 30 yards right here, yo. Easy. Easy. His typical rhythm, and he throws a late curl, on, which guys. is intercepted. There were also some examples of impressing too. They have this spacing concept where they're reading the curl flat defender. But when the 49ers mix up the look a bit and the read technically should go to Dalton Schultz, in reality, CD is the one who is open and he is not happy about it. They keep this going picks, is bro. what I'm talking about. That can be a robot. And then we have another callback to the 21 game where they're trying to connect on this shallow cross, but it's still wonky. They're not on the same page. Oh, man. Now Dak tries to throw back shoulder like we talked about, and it's just not good. You can just feel something is wrong when watching the Cowboys in the postseason. Oh, like, bro. something is off. And that's what AI. I put my finger on when watching all this film. Post they right. are tight. They're pressing. Post they know the touchdown. gravity of the Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs. And when they got How many picks did he throw this game? That's three picks? This thing is film, selling shit. They are tight. They're pressing. They know the gravity of the Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs. And when they got absolutely blown out 48-32 a few months ago, <laughs> they always throw a pick. It was never more apparent. Oh my god. One thing that jumped out to me early was CD struggling to get open. There were two examples where he was isolated outside as the first read. So if Dak is counting on him to be open outside, he's putting a lot of trust in him because on these quicker concepts, there's not really a second option. And CD struggling out of the gate affected the rest See, of the look, game. See, look, look what happens when you run. Look what happens when you run. Tight. Come on, yo. Just a couple of these missed layups put the Cowboys in an early hole where a Terrible first throw. down Aaron throw turns into a second and 10, which turns into a third and seven. And before you know it, you're down multiple touchdowns. With the score 14-0 in the mid-second quarter on third and five, the Cowboys have this smash yeah, concept over, against cover two zone. Smash is a flat and corner, which is meant to stretch out the curl flat defender. If he bites on CD like he does, the corner route comes open. And I believe that cuz CD struggled to separate earlier in the game, Dak didn't want to throw this. Sure, we've talked about how bad it is to throw speed outs when the corner's body position is ready to drive and pick it off. But I think a throw deep outside here gets the job done. And if yeah. Dak's not going to throw this, there's also a window to hit Jake Ferguson. Doesn't do that either. And instead of hitting Michael Gallup on the backside dig, he leaves the clean pocket, takes a sack, knocks the Cowboys out of field goal range, and by the time they get the ball back, instead of it being 14 to three, it is now 20 to zero. There were more examples of quarterback and receiver not being on the same page. I think this one's on Dak, because you want CD running away from the zone defender, but he looks at CD like he's insane, so maybe I'm wrong on that one. And this leads us to the play that broke the game wide open with two minutes left in the half, still down 20 to nada. Dak drops back, trying to pick up a quick first down on second and two. Another and Darnell pick? Savage intercepts the pass and takes it to the house. This is another example. Bro, does be Dak Prescott average more picks than completions in the postseason? I'm not even a Cowboys fan. This is making me mad bit robotic this is where the Cowboys are running this triple slant concept and you're really reading each defender over till you find the open slant. When he sees Savage coming down for the first slant, he immediately progresses to the next, but that's the issue. He is so by the book, so, well, robotic, on paper he gets to the correct read, but by not reading it out completely, he can't see that Savage is shading towards the second window and he intercepts the pass. I like robotic quarterbacks. Playing in structure and on time leads to the highest floor for a player, and it breeds consistency. But when watching Dak in this offense in the playoffs, there needs to be more times where he creates a second play. Playoff defenses are so good, there are just fewer times when you're going to have wide open receivers. But Dak is not a creator. Creators are truly this next generation of quarterbacks. Guys who can move around to let the receivers get open off script. Thank you. But the Dallas Cowboys do not have one. Yeah, bro. He's good. Don't get me wrong. Just not an elevator where he'll push his team over the top. Yeah, bro. I still like and that's, the Cowboys. And that's actually great he just said that. Because as, now that I think about it, that's what separates the postseason from the regular season. 
because now you have to do stuff that's off script. You have to literally, everything is just freely now. You know what I'm saying? If you try to be a robot and, oh, yeah, this is how I've been doing it the whole season, so I'm going to still do it this way. No, no. It's, it, it, something's not, first of all, it's like you said, defense is going to be tighter, okay, because it's the playoffs. It's not, you know what I'm saying? So you're not going to have open reads. People are going to be trying to fake like they're doing one thing and then, uh, pick. You know what I'm saying? It, it, that's just how it is, bro. So if you're not a playmaker, that's what they call it, a playmaker. If you're not a playmaker, if you're not a playmaker, what are you, bro? What are you? Even even Tom Brady. Tom Brady is a playmaker. You know what I'm saying? And he just, Tom Brady, another thing, too, he just always knows um, the right reads. And another thing, too, he takes chances. I feel like Dak Prescott don't take no risk. You have to take risk, bro. You have to throw a bad pass. Um, that can still be caught if you have a good receiver. That's what Tom Brady type shit he do. Dak Prescott throw bad passes to the other team. It's, it's a difference. It's a difference. Bad pass to your team or bad pass to the other team. Okay? Boys, as we move into the 2024 season, but it's hard not to wonder what their ceiling is. The floor has been a consistent 12-win team the last three years in a row that can wow. easily roll into the playoffs, wow. but then reality smacks them in the face. This is going to be a huge year for Big D to go deeper into the playoffs. So Dak Prescott will have to play loose, handle the pressure, and create so like later that. in the down. So that do this, that's exactly what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm Prescott talking about. Have to play loose, do shit like this. Do shit like this. Thank you. Do shit like this. Handle the pressure and you see this? Later this, this is what they want to see right here. This, this is what makes somebody win the Super Bowl versus somebody who stands up. Well, if I'm getting sacked, I have to throw it away. Oh, my God. If I'm getting sacked. Like, no, bro. Take chances. And, and what is this? A bad pass to your team. Get down. This is a good oh. look. Cool. Everything's fine. You know so that he can smash through Especially. that ceiling. Let me know in the comments how y'all feel about uh, Dak Press. I got uh, this upcoming year. Um, Co Cowboys fans, or not even just Cowboys fans, just everybody. Do y'all think that Dak is the reason that the Cowboys suck? I mean, I think I think that's what it is, bro. I think it's just him, bro. Um, like I said, I fuck with Dak Prescott, um, especially his story and stuff like that. But when it comes down to NFL and you trying to actually win Super Bowl championships, it's just what it is, bro. It's cutthroat, bro. This is a business. Don't take it personal. It's a business, bro. You ain't getting the job done, nigga. You ain't getting the job done, nigga. You ain't doing it. You ain't fucking doing it.